Hello, and thank you for tuning in to Word of Deliverance, Deeper Studies. I'm Melanie Bitimo. And I'm Mark McComas. And I'm Michelle Patton. We want to always thank you for tuning in. Um, we ask that you stay tuned. If you want to send um, an email or send us a letter, write us a letter. Um, and please join in with our ministries if you want to send them financial support to spread forth the gospel across many, many radio stations and TV stations. We ask that you please help us to, to be a part of the gospel, to, to spread it, because everything that you may give will go directly 100% to the spreading forth of the gospel. We're all volunteers here. Nothing that you would help us with will be used for personal things, only for the purpose for radio, programs, TV and purposes like that and want to thank you in advance for that today we have a very important message to you how many of you guys love the truth amen, amen. how many of you guys love the Bible amen. amen you know that the truth is so important it and is. you know one thing about taking heed into the truth and loving it you'll be able to receive it a lot better you know because what's the opposite of loving the truth loving a lie amen you know so today we just want to go into a message to help us out and you know give more knowledge of the truth according to our bible according to the scriptures and just help help us all out because i appreciate it not only are we you know speaking on the radio but we're speaking to ourselves amen, amen. we're being doers of the word too when we want this to be in our heart and in our mind and, and have this as something that we aim for is loving the truth and seeking for the truth and um that's what we want so we pray that the message helps you out michelle where are we going to begin today amen we're going to start out with um, I'll start with 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. Uh -huh. And it says, um, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring them upon themselves swift destruction. And many, many shall follow their pernicious ways by the reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of mm -hmm. and so we know that there are many false prophets out there today there are many false teachers among us today amen and there's a lot of people and people are going for it and there are many people following after it amen. because it feeds their lust amen it their lust loves it it, yes. it just it, it appeals to the lust nature. Mm -hmm. And it was something about false teaching and lies yes. the lust nature loves. It's fascinated it by is. it. Mm -hmm. It's just fascinated by it. It, it. it loves it. Yes. Well, you know, even as you, you stated about this lust, and I'll go to uh, 2 Peter 3.3, 3, and he says, Know this first, that there shall come in the last day scoffers walking after their own lust. So we see here that in the last days that... We're going to have people walking after the lust because, as we stated, they love it. Amen. And as Michelle was reading this Second Peter chapter 2 about these false teachers um, that have privily brought in damnable heresies, and this privily is talking about in a way that's very secretly to where it, it, it's not even known because it's done in the secret. It's in such a sneaky, in the background way to where if you're not careful you won't even know it and it's done by bringing in these doctrines and you even see a lot of um even sunday school teachers they purchase pre-written books to help them bring forth their messages and even a lot of the bibles that they have revised nowadays have been changed and they're slowly changing it in a way to, to put some lies in there. Yes. And I believe that even as we're talking about these doctrines and these teachers and these heresies, it even stems from the books that we read. It has a very important factor on where we gain our information from. Amen. Because people are doing this intentionally, divinely, as we're talking about divinely selected. This book is written to those that have been divinely selected and have obtained precious faith. Okay, those that have been born again, received the faith of Jesus Christ, that's who it's written to. Therefore, we have a divine power and divine nature. And it's written to us to be aware of this because there are people that are creeping in the churches, so to say, 
to lead one astray. Amen. And you know, I want to say, will you use that, that privately shall they bring in their damnable heresies? Uh -huh. And that word privately has something, a word in there called surreptitious. 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 Uh -huh. And it says, kept secret, especially because it would not be approved of. Mm -hmm. So we see they keep these things so kept in secret because they're not approved. Right. Amen. So you got anything you want to share? Uh, uh, just go ahead. Okay. So we're going to go on further about the second Peter chapter two, verse one. It says, even denying the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. You understand that swift destruction so speedily that you don't even realize it. It happened so quickly. You know how quickly the devil, once he gets in there, he's like, he has a grip that's almost impossible to be delivered from. Once you allow Satan in, do you know how hard it is to get loose from the captivity, so to say, of Satan? Especially when it comes to, I don't want to say religion or the Bible or beliefs, because that's something that some people truly rely on. That's a way of living, is your religion, so to say in your Bible and your beliefs. And when the devil comes in in a way of lying, you with the, lying to you with the scriptures, do you know how important that is? That will destroy your health, your mind, your soul, your spirit. That destroys everything to the point where you could be at a complete loss or destruction. And some people, there's this one teaching as we're talking about false teachers bringing in damnable heresies, there's a new thing that I've heard that you can take the mark of the beast and repent. To me, that doesn't line up with my Bible. No, it doesn't. Because if you look at the mark of the beast, what happens before the people take the mark of the beast, to me, they're sent strong delusions. It's a process. Taking the mark of the beast is not something that's instant. It's something that you put your mind toward. And once you turn your mind over and become reprobate, how is there any cure once your mind is turned over to believing a lie? How is there any cure? The reason why they cannot repent is because they don't want to repent. Mm -hmm. Because once they take the mark of the beast and their mind is turned over to that strong delusion... They're not going to want to repent. They don't believe that they have to repent because they believe that Satan is God and that they're going to worship him. And people say, well, some might take the mark of the beast, you know, because they need to, to eat and they need to feed their family. I'm like, wait a minute. They're taking it because that's what they want to do. Mm -hmm. it, and, you know, as we stay, as, as they want to do, and we open up the program with that lust, that lust in them yearns for these things. They want to believe these things instead of believing the word of God. Jesus tells us in John 8, 32, he says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. We're not to go back into this bondage of these things. And as Melanie stated, can, 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 you know, somebody repent after taking the mark of the beast? Well, let's read, we're going to give a couple verses and I'm going to read in Matthew 24 24 and then maybe Melanie or Michelle will touch a little further in 2 Thessalonians and Revelations he says for there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if they were possible they shall deceive the very elect so we understand that the mark of the beast is coming in the second half three and three and a half years and in Matthew 24 this is the time where this is written also so we're, we're here to show people not to believe these, these false prophets, these damnable heresies that bring swift destructions. So is there a way that we can be deceived? Is there a way that you will take the mark of the beast because you say, oh, well, I could take the mark of the beast, but I can be forgiven for it because what does it say about blasphemy? It shall not be forgiven. Mark 3 28 and 29 talks about blasphemy against the Holy Ghost will not be be forgiven. But as we're speaking about the truth and as we're speaking about knowledge, blaspheming against the Holy Ghost, do you understand, according to 2 Thessalonians, it talks about the Antichrist coming and people worshiping him and shall come with lying signs and lying wonders and with all powers and all the deceivableness. Why? Does it deceive even them 
who love not the truth. And if you think about the Holy Ghost, it is what, according to John, it's in John 14, John 15, and John 16, the Holy Ghost is the spirit of truth. And what happens when you don't love the truth? You don't love, to me, if you don't love the truth, you don't love the Holy Spirit. You're rejecting the truth. You're rejecting the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is what leads you unto truth. Remember John 14, 26, the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name. He shall teach you all things. The Holy Ghost teaches you and gives you truth. So if you don't love the truth, what happens? Second Thessalonians. Brother Mark, you want to tell them? Yeah. For those that love not the truth, what happens? Well, I'm going to read Second Thessalonians chapter 2, 9 through 11. And he says, even him whose coming is after the workings of Satan with all powers and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusions that they should believe a lie. So we see here that they're going to be sent strong delusions. We see that playing around with these doctrines, these false teachers and, and such as we're pointing out now, taking the mark of the beast and getting forgiven for and asking for repentance. No, that you're blaspheming the spirit of truth. You have denied him. You have denied the truth. You have blasphemed God. You have blasphemed Jesus. There is going to be no end result except what he tells is going to happen in Revelations 14 for those that take the mark of the beast, for those that worship the beast in the image. This is the danger of playing with false teachers, false prophets, and damnable heresies, false teachings, books, however you want to, you know, believe that. I mean, but it's stated here in scripture. Amen. Amen. And I know that they also say that, oh, well, they can repent because they were deceived. Hello, when you reject the truth, yes, you open yourself to be deceived. Yes. You want to be deceived. Amen. And in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12 and 13, it says, Yea, and all that live that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Yeah. So if it, they're deceived because they want to be deceived, they're being deceived because they're evil ways, they're, because their e works are evil, and because they are evil people, and they're seducing, deceiving people, and they themselves are being deceived. Uh -huh. And that is not an excuse that for, to repent. I'm sorry, but they're not going to want to repent. It says right here that they will wax worse and worse. They're not going to repent of their sins. They're mm -hmm. going to wax worse and worse. Amen. And, you know, I believe that the Bible gives us an example, many, many examples for us to learn from as born-again believers. There's also many doctrines that, that teach once saved, always saved. But if you look at the story in Numbers chapter 22 through Numbers chapter 25, it teaches of a story of Balaam. And there was a man, Balak, had came with rewards of divination unto Balaam and wanted him to curse the children of Israel. And what happened? It gave us an example of what happened in 2 Peter chapter 2 about Balaam. He says, and I'll tell you that in 2 Peter 2.15, which have forsaken the right way and gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Besor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. It actually drove Balaam mad. Because the people came to him with rewards of divination. Some people say that's money. The next thing when the people came to them, and you can look in the book of Numbers, again, it's chapter 22. The second time they came to them, they wanted to promote him to great honor, exaltation. And something about the lust nature wants to be recognized, wants to feel good, wants to prosper, wants to be rich, wants to know, oh, it's okay to sin. But guess what? They forget to tell you for the wages of sin is death. Sin has a price. And Balaam, my opinion, it didn't say that he ever repented of it. So what does that go to state? Something happened. Something went wrong in Balaam's life. And it gave, again, a great example in 2 Peter chapter 2 to us. What will happen if we do such things? And I'll tell you real quick 
in verse 18 of 2 Peter chapter 2. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh. You see that again? Mm -hmm. Something about the lust of the flesh is allured with swelling words, with vanity, okay? Through much wantonness, those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. For what they promised, they them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, from whom a man is overcome of the same as he brought in bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn away from the holy commandment delivered unto them. So I'll stop right there. Well, you know, and even as you're giving all these examples and, and we's touching on, you know, how the lust is going to drive you to these things. It's going to drive you away from, from the love of God and his truth. This is why it's so important that we know how to feed our God nature, that we stay away from these things because there's something about the lust that's going to lure you into these things with these teachings mm -hmm. and with these doctrines. And even, you know, we're in Second Peter chapter 2, and, and this will bring a swift destruction upon you. And, and God is warning you about these things before they come into your life and bef before they reach Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11, before they reach Revelations 13, before they reach Revelations 14. God is trying to warn people and not only the lost but his people because remember this book of second peter was written to those of precious faith mm -hmm. so he is warning and exhorting us look you better stay in line because these things are here and you still can fall and you still can be a partaker of this swift destruction if you fall under the wrong teaching like we said now they're a new fab saying well you can take the mark of the beast and you can be forgiven because they want to use well it's not blasphemy against god and and according to to mark chapter 3 28 and 29 they say well the only sin that is is not forgiven is blasphemy against god and the holy ghost so then so then they say well okay and they create this false sense of uh security because then they can start reaching out to other books and other topics and get outside the bible but this could bring in a damnable heresy that brings swift destruction upon yourself amen and one thing again we cannot state it enough in this second peter chapter one it tells you what the world will do. The world will corrupt you through lust. And as we stated about the false teachers, guess what they're doing? Alluring people through lust. These false teachers, these scoffers, these people that speak such great words, mm -hmm. they're deceiving people Amen. through lust. Amen. And you know, if we read the second Peter chapter one, it tells us what we need to do. Therefore, we're not deceived. And one thing, my opinion, is knowing that there is a lust nature and knowing, knowing that the lust nature is intrigued by lies. Mm -hmm. Some of us say, how is that possible? The lust don't love the truth. Mm -hmm. The lust don't want to hear the truth. Has anybody ever told you the truth and you get offended? The flesh don't like hearing that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. The flesh gets scared. And you know, if somebody says that you could take the mark of the beast and repent, go to Revelations 13. And show me where anybody has repented. It tells you about those who took the mark of the beast. They're going to be cast into the lake of fire. It doesn't show anywhere of having any way possible of taking the mark of the beast and repenting. It's not possible. It tells you what happens to those who take the mark of the beast. They're going to be put into the lake of the fire. And even as we stated in the second Thessalonians chapter two, they're going to be sent strong delusions. And strong delusions is basically, like Brother Mark was saying, a mental disorder, being mentally disabled, so to say. That is in a way of not knowing the truth, not being able to even receive the truth. Amen. So how can we help the people? Well, and, you know, um, I want to share even in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 through 4, and it says, For the time come where they will not endure sound doctrine, 
but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. Mm -hmm. And this word fables means a tell of fiction. So we see here that they're, they're into this fiction, this something that's not even true because they have got outside of the Bible, they have got outside the covenant, they have not believed the spirit of truth, they have not followed up with the criteria of the word of God, and now we see the condition potentially that you could end up in. Uh-huh. Amen. Well, one way to help people is to say no, this for sure, is to tighten your walk with Jesus. Yes. Amen. And to stay in the spirit and walk in the spirit. Galatians chapter 3 verse 16 says, if you walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Yes. Well, how do we walk in the spirit? How do we grow? Uh -huh. In Second Peter chapter 2, I mean chapter 1, t verses 5 through 10 tells you all how to grow tells you how to walk in the spirit Amen. how it tells you how to give your life to jesus and how to keep your life set apart for jesus it mm -hmm. says and besides this give all diligence that means do it quickly and do it continuously yes add to your faith virtue and that virtue is intrinsic is that intrinsic value intrinsic value and mm -hmm. we talked about on our first program of how you have that intrinsic value is by um prayer fasting, humbling yourself yes. before the Lord, and keeping hum a humble heart before the Lord. Amen. And also, he says to add to virtue, knowledge, knowledge, temperance, temperance, patience. And that temperance is talking about self-control. That's right. Mastering yourself, mastering self-control. Amen. And we have to learn how to um, keep our bodies and our uh, under subjection and keep the lust under control mm -hmm. and, and it talks about the knowledge we have to grow in the yes. knowledge and the knowledge we have to get to continue in the scriptures studying the scriptures and meditating upon the scriptures day and night Amen. and that's how we learn to have that knowledge that's right and then after you have the temperance you have patience yes and after you have that patience is that long suffering yes. you'll be and it says to to be happy and yes. joy and to suffer with with joy yes. and gladness and the, the bible says in all things give thanks for this is the will of god in the philippians 4 he says rejoice and again i say rejoice mm -hmm. and we are to meditate on things that are pure lovely and good of a good report and we are to um keep think on these things yes even when we're going through especially when we're going through tribulations and yes. trials amen and then it says to not only to add to your faith patience but it says to godliness mm -hmm. godliness being like god yes somebody would say how can i be like god i'm not a saint but we can be saints we can that's one set it. apart for the lord yes that's dedicated to the lord at not living a lustful life according to anger and pride and rebellion, but being godly, Amen. being like Michelle was stating, all these, all these things, temperate, meek, humble, willing to suffer, willing to get into your Bible, not having to be forced to do it, Amen. but in return, it will create a godly character who is like God. Amen. And you know, some of these things like, and as Michelle has, has read and, and what will happen in verse 10, wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election assure. These are things that are, are we are called to do. And this is some, something that some people may call simple, but it's yeah. just general Bible knowledge. Amen. If, you, if you would pick up your Bible and you would read it and you would ask God to help you, then you would be able to add these things into your life. Amen. And, and you'd be able to make your calling and your election assure that you wouldn't have to worry about getting outside to, to these you know, false prophets and teachers because you're going to have the spirit of truth leading and guiding you. You're going to be with First, First Peter 2, 21. You're going to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. You're going to know what he preached, what he teach, because you've read his gospels, because you've read what the apostles and, and what the foundation of Jesus Christ is. You're going to be able to add to your things. And as Michelle was saying, I think patience is, is something that's going to be a key mm -hmm. factor because it's going to take some time it's going to take some time for you to grow into this knowledge. And once you grow into this knowledge, you got to go further. You have to go further with this knowledge. With Michelle stated, the intrinsic value with the virtue. You have to go further to the knowledge that you've already gained. You have to ask God for more. Amen. Amen. And this says the Bible, in your patience, 
possess ye your souls. That's right. So he that endureth in the until the end the same shall be saved amen and then it also says to add to your patience brotherly kindness yeah and we have to learn how to love one another yes not to take advantage of one another not to beat up up upon one another and to just down one another but to love one another yes and also when we see them fall yes hey give them a mild rebuke yes lift them up Say, hey, brother, you're going the wrong way. Yes. That's showing kindness. The Bible says open rebuke is better than secret love. Amen. So and rebuking, like you said, mildly with love. Yes. And meekness. Yes. Yeah, we're, we're, if one be overtaken with a fall, we're supposed to be able to restore him in the spirit of meekness. There's something about being humble and meek that, that will help somebody better than coming at him with an er, er, er attitude. He says a soft answer turn off away wrath but grievous words stir up anger so coming at them with a spirit of meekness instructing them in the word of god is is going to be key because that's going to be what really helps them amen, amen. and the last one is charity which amen. is the love of jesus that's right and the love of jesus you'll find that in first corinthians chapter 13 it tells you the characteristics yes. it hates evil i mean it doesn't speak evil it, it loves it rejoices in good things it rejoices in hope and it believes all things uh -huh. and is pure. Yes. And we know that um, the love of Jesus will keep us. Amen. And if in verse 8 it says, For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. He says, Wherefore, in verse 10, give di rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. Amen. So this is how you grow in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. And this is how you keep from being deceived mm -hmm. is by staying in your word, growing in the knowledge of God and letting the fruits produce, the fruits of Christ produce in your life. Amen. Remember in uh, St. John 15, he says, um, he that beareth fruit mm -hmm. is, is, shall be, um, what am I trying to say? He that beareth not fruit uh -huh. shall be cast oh, yes. into the fire. Yes and mm -hmm. wither amen so you have to bear fruit that's the truth yeah you have to bear fruit you amen. have to be fruitful amen and in these things that we're speaking as we first stated the program we spoke of false teachers and one thing again is we gave these examples on what we need to do because the elect can be deceived by the lust and again the example of second peter chapter 2 with balaam he turned away. He turned away. And we see what happens if you turn away from the truth. Read your Bible, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Read your word. See what happens if you are deceived and what will be the end results. And remember the 2 Peter 2 verse 2. And many shall follow their pernicious ways. And that pernicious talks about to be fully destroyed physically mentally and eternal and we know that destruction eternal destruction is eternal damnable fire and we pray that you got something out of today's message our purpose is to spread the gospel deliver people from the powers of satan by speaking the word of truth by the power of the holy ghost and if you want to email us if you need prayer please send a send a prayer request we promise we have a prayer box that we put in Please send it in there. I'll tell you the email address. It's freedom, F-R-E-E-D-O-M, 33359 at gmail.com. Or send us a letter, 518 Pleasant Valley, Dayton, Ohio, 45404. Please, and always stay repentive. Say, God, forgive me of my sins. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Cleanse me with your blood. And I promise I'll keep your word. Give me the power to become your son today. In Jesus' name.